Hi and welcome to tutorial 3. In the previous tutorial we developed a simple web application and uh, we wrote a simple servlet in the web app and we were able to execute that servlet on Tomcat. We didn't do a whole lot of coding, it was mainly using uh, the Eclipse wizards and uh, using the pre-built uh, code that Eclipse generated for us. So um, in this tutorial we're going to go a bit uh, behind the scenes, we're going to see what exactly Eclipse did for us so that we can understand what it takes to uh, write a servlet. And we'll also understand how Tomcat listens to incoming requests and maps it to a, you know, a request to the servlet itself. So um, I have the project open here. Let us open up the servlet itself. Okay, now uh, before we start, let's execute this one more time. So I'm going to right click on this, run as, run on server. Okay, Tomcat comes up. I will select this here. Uh, this checkbox tells Eclipse that, you know, I need to run this project always on Tomcat so I don't have to answer this every time. Let's say finish. Now again, it builds, deploys, and it opens up the browser tab, executing that servlet. Okay, now if you can see here, the URL that um, has been opened for us is uh, localhost colon 8080, which means it's trying to access this Tomcat instance we've configured. And uh, after that comes a simple servlet project, which is the context root for this web application. And after that is this word, simple servlet, here. So this is actually how Tomcat refers to the servlet that we wrote here, simple servlet or Java. It is not related to the name of the class, even though the name of the class here is simple servlet, that's not what tells Tomcat that this needs to run. What tells Tomcat that this servlet needs to run is this particular annotation here called URL patterns. So what we are telling here with the annotation is that whenever anybody accesses the URL slash simple servlet, then execute this Java class. So that's one of the things that is mentioned in this uh, particular annotation where at web servlet. So um, in order to write a servlet, uh, the first thing that we need to do is of course extend uh, HTTP servlet class, which we did when we uh, you know use the wizard to generate the servlet. But then after that, you need to have this web servlet uh, annotation. This web servlet annotation takes a lot of properties, but uh, the one that we need to remember is this URL patterns. Description is just, uh, you know, it just makes it easier to uh, document what this does. You can you can write any, any descriptive value here. Um, URL patterns is the key. This tells Tomcat that whenever an access of slash simple servlet comes to this application, then execute this class. So basically this is how it works. You type HTTP localhost colon 8080, then you get the Tomcat instance. And then you see the Tomcat welcome page. And after that, you enter the web application name, which is simple servlet project. You see the welcome page. Remember in the previous tutorial, we configured the welcome file, which is basically if you don't have any particular resource which is accessed in the web uh, call, then what is the resource that Tomcat needs to display? So that's what we're doing here. We are not we are not mentioning any particular resource. So Tomcat goes to the welcome file list and it finds one that's available and it just renders that. So that is this one. So we are actually rendering index.html here. Now after this, if I call this servlet, then Tomcat knows that this is the servlet that needs to get generated. I mean, uh, executed, and uh, the default method is the do get. So uh, this method runs, and uh, this is what gets printed in the response. 
Uh, of course, you also have another line of code here which prints to the log files, which we have already seen. So this is at a very high level. We're going to go a bit in depth and see how you know the the whole process goes. Again, we're going to go. We're not going to go into the complete depth, but um, at a little bit more detail. Okay, this is this is at at a very high level. You have a browser here which you are you know the client is using to access the web application you have the tomcat instance and you have many web applications deployed in this tomcat instance now let's say the browser makes a call with the particular url the url tells tomcat what needs to be done first of all the name of the url which is localhost colon 8080 in our case you know makes tomcat to run pick up that url and execute now what happens is tomcat then creates two objects. One is a request object and one is a response object. The request object contains details about the request that the browser made. It could have query parameters, it could have post variables. So uh, there's, there's a whole lot of data that can go along with the HTTP request. I'll, we'll get into the details later. But uh, all that information gets stored in this request object. The response object will currently not have anything of significance. This is meant for the web application to process and uh, put the response back here so that Tomcat can feed this response back to the browser. Now Tomcat examines this request object and uh, of course it, it examines the, the URL and based on the URL it identifies that this particular web application needs to run the simple sublet project. Again, this is based on the context route. Now, once it identifies the simple servlet project, then it goes to the web.xml in the simple servlet project, or it looks at the annotations that have been configured in the simple servlet project, and it identifies which servlet needs to be run. This is something that we've already seen based on the, you know, the, the part of the URL after the web application. So that part is going to give Tomcat a clue as to which servlet needs to be run. It, it references this with the web.xml or the annotations and it identifies the servlet. Now in this case, it is a simple servlet. Now it executes this simple servlet now. In order to execute this, what it does is it passes these two objects to the simple servlet. Now simple servlet takes a request object and it gets the input parameters. In our example, it's a, well, it's a simple servlet. It doesn't do much, so it, do, it doesn't really look at the request object, but it's there if you want. When you're writing the servlet code, you can pick up this request object and examine the contents to see more details about the request itself. Now the simple servlet objects picks up this data, does the processing, and then publishes its result to the response object. So if you're uh, if you're generating HTML code, then the HTML code goes to the response object. You, you, you can pretty much uh, write anything you want and it'll get generated in the response. Now, this is something that we have done in our simple sublet. We have taken the response object. We've got the print writer from the response object by using the get writer method. And then in the get writer method, we have entered some text. Now, this text, will sit in the response object. And now what Tomcat does is it takes the response object and renders it as HTML back to the browser. And that's how the browser sees what the simple servlet had uh, rendered. So well, we'll go back to the do get method here. So the do get method takes two parameters. One is the request and one is the response as we've seen. So the request is actually a HTTP servlet request object and the response is actually a HTTP, HTTP servlet response object. Now we are printing into the response objects by print writer method and this is the text that gets rendered. Now let's say I want I want to change the way this is accessed. Now I don't want this to be simple servlet. I want this to be uh, called advanced server, let's say. Now if I execute this, Tomcat does not find a servlet in this application 
which has this particular annotation. We have only one servlet which has an annotation of URL pattern, a simple servlet. So it does not find anything with advanced servlet. Now if you access this, you obviously get a 404, which means that Tomcat doesn't know what to do. It doesn't find a simple advanced servlet. It says requested resource is not available. So in order to make this work, and in order to make simple servlet get executed when you call the advanced servlet URL, all you need to do is change this particular URL pattern. I'm going to call this advanced servlet and save. Now it's going to reload the servlet. We have done an auto reload. Now if I access this, the same method, the do get is getting executed, but the URL is different. So by simply changing the annotation, you can, you can trap different requests. So you can say uh, what is the exact name of the URL that should trigger the execution of the servlet. 